Hi, and welcome back to Epic Life. Thanks for joining us today. We're continuing our study of a book study on the book called The Map, The Way of All Great Men by David Murrow. If this is your first time joining us, don't worry. You can go back and watch the intro, and you can jump in at any point to see any of our trail markers, which we have been working through as we've been working up the summit of the journey of submission. So this journey of submission that we've been on, today we are actually on trail marker six. And I'm excited about this because I really like this trail marker. and It's been a real blessing to me in my life. Trail marker six is called Gathering a Team. So what's the lesson for us? The sixth lesson of discipleship is this. You cannot make a solo ascent of the mountain of manhood. Now that's very important because as men, you know, we can we tend to be lone rangers or another example, we tend to like, you know, we look at like uh, Rocky fighting our own battle by ourselves, even though he had Mick all the same. And then we look at like maybe like Rambo, right? He's one man army or here's one Captain America, right? I mean, so we, we got to assemble a team, right? Um, to be able to, we, have, we can't do this journey alone. You need climbing partners to go with you. Christianity is and always has been, and excuse the analogy, but it's a team sport, right? And now it's not a sport. I don't want to, I don't want to lo- like lower down like you know the beauty of our relationship with God. But so many of us like sports, and we like the analogy of like you know uh, conquering a task together. Here's the key: Jesus never sent anyone out alone. You can read through the scriptures, you know, and he sends people out in twos. And you can see that Jesus understood the the need for community. Yet because of the way our modern society and our congregations are structured, men tend to become isolated even in church. A Gallup poll of churchgoers found that 51% of women had a best friend while only 35% of men did. Dan Erickson writes, quote, Even in the church, very few men have close friends. For the most part, men are spiritually fed but relationally bankrupt end quote and it is in this environment the devil can most easily single out and destroy his prey let's look at first peter 5 8 to get a better understanding of this if you turn to first peter 5 8 if not it's good i can read it for you it says be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour satan's always looking for a target and he loves He loves lone survivors, which really aren't lone survivors, spiritually speaking. He likes islands. That's Satan's best target, you know? He likes to find those people who aren't willing to do community, aren't willing to maybe lean on a brother or a sister in Christ, right? So it's important here, men, that you really find that group of brothers that you can really depend on. I really think it's more important, honestly, to have a brother in Christ to really confide and lean on than, say, a sister in Christ because of the challenges that can go into that. Us men, we got we need each other, you know, and, and I think it's important because you look at Jesus, he surrounds himself with 12 men, right? And even in those 12 men, he had an inner circle of three. Men, if you are isolated, you are easy prey. It's not enough to go to church on Sundays. You need a small group of guys you really know and trust. Guys you meet with regularly, guys who can help you get up the mountain. I think that one of the greatest things that we can do, men in our churches today, is to actually have fellowship with other men. To really, to have like, and I'm not saying that you got to get together with a big group of guys and just share everything. You remember, even Jesus had an inner circle. But I think you definitely need at least one or two men where you can really just lean on them, share with them your struggles, share with them your challenges, and let them pray for you. Like that's huge, praying for each other. You know, if you look at Matthew 4, 12 through 22, I want to kind of illustrate this more with a biblical example. Let's go there. So in Matthew 4, 12 through 22, we see the following. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. Uh, those living in the land of the shadow of death, the light is dawn. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, 
Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and father and followed him. You know, this is important because Jesus Jesus surrounded himself with a team. He's God. He didn't need to. But those men then went out and they surrounded themselves with other people. And they surrounded themselves with other people. And we see this multiplying effect, right? Men, we need to surround ourselves with godly brothers in Christ. As that iron sharpens iron. So let's look at the prayer. The fifth prayer of a disciple of Jesus, or I should say the sixth prayer of a disciple of Jesus, should be this one. Lord, I know you are on my team, but who else is? Reveal to me, Lord, the men you have placed in my life who can help me climb the mountain of manhood. Pray for God to reveal the men that he has placed in your life. Which takes us to our GPS, which I know is, you got it, good practical stuff. So if we get off the trail, if we get lost, this can help us get back on track. We should ask ourselves this question. What brothers in Christ has God placed in your life that can help you grow? Ask yourself that. What brothers has God placed in your life that can help you grow? And are you willing to make time to meet with them weekly? you got to be intentional. you got to apply. you got to be real. Thanks for joining us. See you next time for Trail Marker 7 and the end of the journey of submission.